What about this year? Huh? What about this year? You guys want to start now? Yeah. I woke up with this Yeah, what? What? Oh, yeah, oh, really? Really? Okay, good okay. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm. Okay. We will basically start where we left off last night, or last time. And it's a page kuf nun vov. Three lines from the top. And Deb is pointing out that before this line, a phenomenal thought. In our orientation, sight is the most convincing experience we can possibly have. Good morning. And therefore, <coughs> it follows that he said that emuna, emuna is that which keeps a yin steadfast. Thank you, emuna, steadfast in his view of life and in his path of life. <coughs> we would say it is due to sight, even though in the physical world it doesn't have that sight, but even in the physical world there is an element of sight, but he, he, he gets the, the effect of the sight that the Nishama sees the mind. The Nishama sees the truth of mind, and that's reflected in the person without him recognizing where that conviction comes from. The Amuna is something which comes from, to him from the Nisham. And he does not realize how the way that originates. And in effect, it originates from the fact that the Nishama sees the divine truth, the truth of God. And therefore, that was a conclusion prior to now in our discussion here, that the ego is the, 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 the ultimate clarity that we have in terms of our race as a connection to our soul. And this is what provides the Amuna, the steadfast path in our life. All right. Now on the third line, on page Kuf Nunbo. Yesh Yesh the, the translation of the word relation means there is room to say. And if you think further into the, 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 the principles and the depth of what we're discussing, it brings you to see, to, to say something that you would not believe you could say. But this is what you're confronted with. 
יש לאמר. There's a possibility to say it. The shoyev is hoa muna, that the shoyev is the root. And we already discussed the meaning of the word root. Root means where it, where it grows from. The point that I'm, I'm emphasizing where it grows from is not where it comes from, how it started. Perish Ramun is not how it started, but what keeps it alive, just like a root of a tree, a root of a, of a grass. Not only where it came from. It is what keeps the tree alive. Let us discuss the tree element for a moment. The tree stands on the ground. And what we see is a is a huge a tree. tremendous power and it stands it is something which is self-standing completely it is true that this tree standing needs ground, needs the earth upon which to stand. But the earth upon which it stands is a byproduct. It does not strengthen, it does not contribute anything anything to the tree. The tree stands stands on the ground. The end is the ground is a space where the tree occupies. But when we think a little further into this phenomenon of the tree stand, we realize that the tree standing on the ground is not needed that the ground provides the base, the space where the tree can stand. The tree standing on the ground represents the infinite, infinite resource that, that the tree has. Whereby the tree standing on the ground is only a superficial observation. The real thing that's taking place at that point is that the tree draws its strength and like we say many times, its right of being, its spirit from the ground upon which it stands. How does it draw the strength and the spirit from the ground upon which it stands? We know that the ground, this is the very first thing that got created. Gracious Lord, we came as a Shemai, as our audience. In our orientation, audits, this is the base creation. The audit, this is not only the place where things occur, but the audit, this is what all activity is all about. As 
the mentioned many times in post success, Hashem created Odom Adishim, Odom and Chava. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Chava the earth. Develop the earth. Keep sure. Keep sure means conquer. Make the earth worthy of supporting the human being, essentially. Reveal in the earth the human quality, the life quality. For the earth to be worthy of a human presence, it's not sufficient that it has <clears throat> the solid place, space. In order to accommodate the human being, human being cannot function in a lifeless environment. As we know, for example, that on Earth, there are different areas. There is the, 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 the land that, that, that is full of, of, of plant life. And then there is the, the desert that is devoid of any life. The human being will not adjust to the desert life. Uh, somebody, could you please mute your phone? Thank you. Our nation was taken out of Mitzrayim and we journeyed 40 years in the desert. This desert during our journey in, in it was transformed temporarily into a human abode. You had a water source following Eden in, in the desert. It had dew and mom coming down for support, for food and so forth. But that was a temporary transformation of the desert. Desert is not where the Eden, where we belong. As it says in the process, I took you out Egypt that led you to the desert in order to bring you to a fruitful and well suited land. Eretz over scholar would wash. A land that flows with milk and honey. That is where we were due to go to. And that is a human being belongs to. What is the difference? The human being can live in the desert, protect himself against the heat by putting on a, uh, a, tent, a tent over himself. He can bring water like we had in the desert from a, from a spring, a gospel. spring. What is it that you say the desert is not suited for human life? After all that we've experienced in the desert for 40 years, we still call it a desert, a lifeless place. And the principle that was, that was learned during this journey is
that a human being is not just a survivor. He has the wherewithal to survive this any situation. He can survive in the desert also. But a human being is not meant for merely survival. As the Bosik says, Milo has always been sure. The human being is meant to live in a land that accommodates him, that reflects his way of life. Not merely that allows him to survive. And that accommodation consists of the of recognition that wherever you look, in any direction you look, what you see is life, not a physical presence. Life is a divine spirit. That's where the human being flourishes. That's where he can, he can relate. That he can orient himself and says, okay, here is where I can establish my base. This is the principle of emunah. In other words, the principle of emunah is not what you observe. This emunah is what permeates your home, it seems. What is the reality in which you function? Not to function, but in reality, where you come from and where you, where, you, where, you, where you develop. Not because of convenience, not because of support, but because this tells you what the truth is. And it doesn't only tell you what the truth is, it embraces you with the truth. That's a moment. Now the Rebbe says, and this is, this is what we are trying to break through. Again, three lines from the top. Kufnim Bok. Yesh If you think of what Yesh Loimar, Yesh means there's room to say. It's possible to say. The expression Yesh Lema sounds like the Rebbe is not sure himself of, of, of what he is going to say. Yesh Lema, we could say. There is no such thing as the Rebbe saying something in a moment and he's not, he's not solidly convinced that this is so. What then is the expression Yesh Lema? The expression of Yesh Lehmer is that what I'm going to say now is really revolutionary. And you may resist, you might not be able to, to orient yourself, to accept it. You will not know where it's coming from. So I'm telling you that that can be said. If can be said means now you have to work with yourself, with your seichel and your meters and with your life to get to that to that to that state, to that reality. This is not something that is readily available to you normally. Yeshlay, there is such a thing pertaining to your life, to you. 
And therefore, it remains for you to labor internally and reveal in your neshama these kind of principles. That is Yeshua. It is not a blanket statement. It is a statement saying, here is where you should aim for. And I'm telling you, that is true. You could be said that. It's right to say that. So therefore, your effort is not going to be futile as long as you pursue it. And what am I saying? I'm saying you should pursue the following path <coughs> to recognize that Shreves <coughs> that the root of a moon, as I've explained before several times, the word shayrish means, means a root. A root does not, root does not mean the, 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 the source where it's coming from, where you find it, but where it grows from. That's like a root of a grass. The grass, the tree, can become a huge tree, a tree, much bigger than the root from which it lives. And yet, this root is all important for this. Without this root, the tree is not a real tree. Because the tree as such, without the life source, without the earth that supports all life, is a piece of wood. The tree must be oriented towards its source, its life source. What's so important of the life source? Why is it not sufficient for the tree to be this as big as it is, as powerful piece of, piece of wood? The answer is that when we look at, at the tree, the, 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 the trunk of the tree, we will wonder that that creature, who created it? We recognize that the creator of this is, is, is a super being. However, to have the creation of the super being without the presence of the super being himself is meaningless. Like we always give this marshal from our own experience. We have a beautiful home. Very accommodating, very welcoming. But it's empty. Where is the host? You come into this beautiful home, there's nobody there. Without the host, the home loses its significance completely. It's by the fact that it's so welcoming and beautiful. What is in fact the significance of the home? What's the difference when you sit in a beautiful home? You have the host next to you, or you're not with that. You're still sitting in a beautiful, comfortable home. Yeah. And this is the unique quality of the human being. In our world, we have two distinct qualities. 
body and soul. By observation to our naked eye, what we see is body. We see the trees, the tree trunks, the huge earth and everything that we see. This is body. And there are many, many creatures that are body oriented. The human being rejects that outright. The human being has a soul and he has an intellect. And his first question is, what is this about? I could see this big thing, but what is it about? What's the question? What is it about? The question what is it about means this is a beautiful creature, but why did the creator make it? Without the presence of the creator. What's the point of this of this creature? It's like a person being a huge building, a, a, a big home, a welcoming place, but he himself is absent. The human being looks for the host. He looks where, it's, where this life comes, where all this originates from. Why is it there? What is his message? Why did the creator make it? This is, this is the principle, what we call a muna in, in the Seichel is very rich. Midis are very profound experiences. And yet, we as Eden, bypass all that. As demonstrated, and here's what we will come face to face with the world. In the world, there are phenomenal things, discoveries. There's the engineering capability to build skyscrapers. Then there is all kinds of research that is being conducted upon the earth. How does this work out of this work? These are all profound scholars, scholars that get to know and understand all kinds of different aspects in the world of existence. We Jews as a nation never were swayed to pursue that path of learning. Our focus was in a different area of the It's amazing. Look at all the scholarship that we're missing out. Wouldn't you think that our Chachomim would have caused us to focus on, on that scholarship? And yet, that wasn't the case. That was not the case. Not 
in the beginning of time when the Greek philosophers were blooming and not in the later time when philosophy, when, when science bloomed. This was not the focus of our yeshivas. We sat in yeshiva, around us science was blooming, and now the yeshiva said, forget about that. We are learning this in Gemara. Learn the mission, learn Hasidus, completely out of this world. What Al Chachomim are telling us we are trying to keep you related and oriented and intellectual intellectually understand that which is higher than world. The God the divine truth. This is where you belong. This is where your intelligence is meant to, to flourish. How so? I'm an, only a human being. <clears throat> I can only know that which I experiment with. I experience. So here's where you're, where you're told straight out. <clears throat> you should know that you are really made of, of a quality way beyond the intelligence. The intelligence at the highest level it's called the Yi of the Chochm, Sight. You essentially relate to that which is beyond sight. We thought at first maybe to tell you that you relate to Amuna. That is the pinnacle of, of intelligence. But then we come to recognition. This is what the Rabbi says, Yeshua. This is a revolutionary insight. Once going through the whole process, Yeshua, we come to the point where we can actually say, make a statement that the Muna is higher than Muslim. Not the moon, the soil is your moon. Where does, where does the, the principle, the orientation of Arun Hashem get its direction? That soil is your moon. It's even higher than the machine of the muzzle, higher than that which the Hashem sees above. This is what we started learning the other day. And here's where we, we're going to pursue it. Right? Again, it's three lines from the top on Kuflin Go. and we explained before what, why the expression Vyesh <coughs> The expression Vyesh is an allusion. Please think of it. The Rebbe is going to say something. But he's not going to say, come out blatantly about it. He's going to say, think about it. I'm suggesting that this can be said. And before I say it fully, before you think deeply into your own mission and see whether that finds place in your mind. Yeshua. 
what can be said when you come to the tip, to the source of the of the neshama? What can be said is a shevesh or amuna that the root, again, the word root does not mean the beginning where you, where you find it. Root means where it grows from. What gives a muna a life, a living quality? What gives a muna a solid base that it can draw from and develop indefinitely? Who that this show that she is, or it lemaila mibchinas master is even higher than the Bechina, than that which you call Mazel. The Bechina means the aspect. It's not even a worldly presence. It's an aspect. It's a source. It's called Mazel. What is Mazel? So we already had exposition, exposition to this before. Mazel is that which the Neshama sees and experiences it only on site level rather than on personal level. Seeing something which is beyond its own presence. Shoy Veshua Muna, where does a Muna flourish, yet its root, its life force, is even higher than the beginning of Mazel. Mazel, we say, he said is Masli Chosi, pinnacle of sight. The root of Amunah, the Shoyvish Amunah, the flourishing force of Amunah is higher than even the union of Mas of sight. And that started with the word Vyesh since we say the word Vyeshlema, Vyeshlema we said before, means it lends itself to be said, which means it's not a concluded, a concluded thing. If it's not a concluded thing, you have to give some kind of supporting evidence. A means by which you can, we can enter it. Yes, you can say, how come I can say? If it's not, if it's not obvious, on what basis am I going to say it? This was the episode. Yesh Lema, there is room to say that Sherish Ramun is even higher than Mask. That statement cannot stand on its own. I have to show you on what basis I'm saying is Shehare. Shehare because be, because behold. This is my supporting evidence, my supporting thought process that makes me say that Sherish Ramun is the Madam King's Mask. Without this shehare, you say that the moon is high, the muzzle is, is, is a meaningless statement. You have to have some kind of a basis. When you say yesh you have to show how come it's yesh Lema. And here is how come it is yesh Shehare. For behold, in the general world of sight, in the year, sight, even though sight, as we said, is the clearest, the most closest, the most ab- ab- convincing experience if you possibly have is sight. But the year also has Hiluki Madrigas and multiple Madrigas. In other words, the Madrigas in the year that bring you closer to the source of what you see, the Madrigas in the year that are not so close to the source of what you see.
we explained it last time when we learned the illustration of this phenomenon. You can see inside the room from outside through the window. You can see inside the room when you were inside the room. In both cases, you see exactly the same thing. Yet one side is not the same as the other side. One side brings it much closer to what you see than, than the other. Even though both cases is sight. So therefore, in the experience of sight, there are different madrigas. Therefore, sight cannot be the basis of a mona. But since inside there are different madrigas, Masha and Ke, which is different for a mona and the Amuna. The Muna is, is different than even than sun, because inside there are many madrigas. Whereas a Muna, Hareize, Hareize, Bekula Mishore. He, he is a, a revolutionary statement. Hareize, Bekula Mishore. Behold. Hare means behold. Ze it is. Bekula Mishore is equal in all of them. A Muna is equal in all of them. Intellectually, all people are different. But in a Muna, it's equal in all of them. What kind of, kind of statement is this? If a Muna is part of your intelligence, the person who a, has a greater intelligence has a greater emotion or a higher level of emotion. However, the Rebbe says, no. Harei zeh bekul on b'shove is equal in all of them. Emuna is equal in all of them. In all he <clears throat> when you say that you're all equal in all of you must be speaking about something that draws upon an element that is not even intellectual. Intelligence is the highest human experience, but this cannot be equal by all. If you say Yamuna is equal by all, then it means that Yamuna is not, does not draw from intelligence. This is what Rebbe just finished saying. The Re'iyah is not, Re'iyah, sight, which is the, the ultimate in intelligence, is not the ultimate of truth that we know. We have something superior to that, it's called the Muna, which does not come from sight. Because the Muna is really higher than sight. Where do we see that giant sight? Because sight, there are different Madrigas. In the Muna, there are no different Madrigas. So my, my Muna cannot be coming from sight. I think the Kulam is sure when you see Kumayo. If a moon is equal by all, it must be that the moon surpasses the experience of sight. Now we go inside again. The P because moon is equal by all. The P because she nimshach because a moon is drawn. The madrego eliena yoyisayit from even a higher madrego then. Sign. Let me elaborate on this one a moment.
<clears throat> a moment, perhaps it's not, it's an understatement, but I have to explain it. <clears throat> we all know that sight, it is supreme clarity we can possibly have. Now, we open our eyes and we see the physical world. All we see is the physical world. What is that revealed to? What is so significant about sight? If you see, you see a physical world. As a matter of fact, the world scholars, those people who get their insight and their wisdom from worldly experience, don't see inside anything miraculous at all. They see in inside a worldly experience. Like we always explain, they see inside a, 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 an effect of a, of a physical life reverberating and being and, uh, and, and deflected from a physical object. And therefore, you see the physical life as it's deflected from the physical object. You're not even seeing the truth of the object. You're seeing how the light deflects from the object. <clears throat> the reason it looks red to you <clears throat> is because this light deflects differently from this object. And it turns out to be red. <clears throat> if it deflects differently, it would look blue. If it deflects less, they become black. If it deflects more, it becomes white. This is all a physical phenomenon. This is how those of us, not us, those in the world that try to that interpret the world all on the worldly physical level, we don't see anything miraculous, any any supreme revelation inside. Zero. It's the same physical entity, except it's a less tangible level. No. The truth, however, is that sight alerts us, because we have the shamans. Sight alerts us to recognize a presence that is really beyond the physical. And think about we said just a moment before, sight is more convincing than touch. You're seeing a physical object. How can sight be more convincing about the physical object than touch? Touch you actually experience the object itself. Inside your own seeing. So how can sight bring the, the reality of a physical object to you more better than, than touch? And yet, we're all sensitive to this phenomenon. That in sight, we see the object from a, more, from a greater truth perspective than we in touch.
Now, once we have this experience of sight, we recognize that, hey, I see this physical object, and in sight, it tells me more about itself than when I touch it. What does it tell me about? What can I know about the physical object more than touch in its physicality? And yet, this is the experience we have. Once we have this experience, it behooves us, the intelligent creature that we are, to try and understand what in fact is this experience of sight. And when we think into it, we realize that in sight, we see the physical object, not after the fact of its being a physical object, like in touch. In touch, you walk and you hit a tree, so you know the tree is there. Touch, you know it once it becomes a, a presence, a physical presence in the world. Sight tells you something else about it. Sight tells you that this world in general and this tree that you're looking at is something that has developed. And it has a source, it has a significance. It has a message beyond its immediate presence. Sight tells you that what you see is only the superficial experience of what you see of the reality. There's a reality prior to this experience of sight. That's what sight alerts you to. Sight alerts you to recognize it. That yes, I see the tree. But what I see in this tree is not its physical presence. But, but I see a living tree. I see the tree as part of the, of, of the reality of the world itself. This tree to me tells me what the world is about, not about what the tree is about. Touch only tells me about the tree. Sight tells me about what's the tree doing over here? How does it belong here? What's its message? Thus, it alerts us to recognize that really the message of what we see is superior to the answer that we actually see. The message precedes the object. The object is only 
shown unto us and the world we live. The message is way before they beyond. The world, the presentation is the end, the lowest, the final step, step of this cycle. The real principle behind the site is a spirit, a creator who wants you to know that there is a truth. Thus, this presentation where I see the truth, that the tree is a true a truth, even without touching it, because I see beyond what's being presented. I see where the presentation comes from. This is called the moon. Presentation is coming from, <clears throat> from the truth of the presenter. This emuna is a phenomenal thing. Is the cool of the Is all equal by all people. Because this Amuna is not a worldly experience. It's not due to any kind of worldly experience, a sight and touching or anything. We don't even know how we get to know of the moon in our world. A moon is an implant from a higher source. This is what says. Nimsha of Madrega go it's equal by all because it's not <coughs> quality dependent, it's not intelligence dependent. It's an implant from a higher source. That's where it can be equal by all. By all. Mm -hmm. A moon is not an experience, a moon is a fact of reality. This is how our creator has made us. There's one more word. Even as you cannot train a dog to become a human being, You cannot train a boy to become a Jew. Unless he goes through the conversion practice, which is, which is effectuated from above. It is not accomplished by training. It's a constantly accomplished from a gift, from as you said, superimposed from above.
That's what Amuna is equal by all. You should nimshach madrega alin yese. It comes from a high madrega. It comes not through an intelligent process. I see the time is up, so I'm just going to say a few words. Mizehu koyach kids Hashem shel Yisrael. This is where the koyach kids Hashem comes on you. This is not an intellectual decision. It's an implant from a higher source. It's not a human. Human makes sense of Kiddush Hashem. You can't make sense of it. So I am pointing that. I will bring point out that the time is up. So I will accept that limit. But Bar Hashem, I want to make sure that we get get to this point. Shkoya, thank you. Okay. Have a great day. Have a wonderful day. Should oh, be beautiful to see all of you. You should only have good news. Amen. 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 Oh my. Um, I, I don't have the cipher in front of me, but uh, the Rebbe is saying that the Amuna is to all Eden Bashava. Um, what is this based on? It's um, what is what and what it on what it is is it based that the Amuna is to all Eden Bashava? Oh, the answer is very simple. There cannot be a greater test to a person than to give up his life. Ah. Okay, and then when it comes to, to Mazl Chuzai, that means that the Muna is coming down to that level? In Seichel, yes. Okay. Okay, very good. Yeah, Shakoyah. Okay. Okay. Shakoyah. Okay. Okay. Okay.